Hello, this is the Greater Lagos Vision and I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedoku. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has announced a 100% funding increase for the state's employment trust fund. According to the governor, the increase is part of measures to help grow small businesses across the state through soft loans. The governor made this declaration at the second edition of the Lagos Employment Summit, co-convened by LSE to F and the Ministry of Economic Planning and Budget. Sawunlu also noted that the state government had committed over 10 billion naira in grants in the past three years to strengthen the activities of LSE to F to support 4,000 micro, small and medium enterprises, MSMES. This is the Greater Lagos Vision. I'm your host, Love Ikuku Oyedukun. Welcome once again. This episode features transport sector reform. So one look kicks off e hailing lag drive service with 1,000 sports utility vehicles for first phase. Building collapse. Lagos State Government partners insurance firms set to pay compensations to victims. Waste management, sort your waste and get reduction in waste bill. As part of efforts to reduce frequent cases of collapsed building and liabilities associated with it, the Lagos State Government is set to introduce a mandatory insurance digital solution platform for all property owners in line with the Federal Government's Insurance Act. There has been cases of collapsed buildings across Nigeria and Lagos is not an exception. This results in loss of lives and billions of narrow in investments. The 21-story building in Ikoi, Lagos, which collapsed on November 2, 2021, was under construction before it caved in. The state government has now taken the bull by the hand to prevent such occurrence. In the last 44 years, there have been over 500, 480 building collapses to be precise. And this is the information that we have. This is the data that we have. Imagine so much more that we didn't even capture. And this just highlights and goes to strengthen the importance of insurance. And many times, when these incidents, dangerous occurrences have occurred, um, the government is almost like the last resort where we then need to pay compensation. What we're saying now is safety is everybody's responsibility. To reduce the burdens and losses incurred by victims of collapsed buildings, the state government enters into a collaboration with insurance companies to ensure safety and in the event of liabilities, pay compensations to the persons concerned. We are taking uh, the purchase of occupiers' liability to another level. We want to, first of all, sensitize everyone that this insurance is not about IGR. It's not about what comes to the insurance industry. It's about the safety of all. You know, sometimes we say, God forbid, it will not happen. But many times we have seen it happening. And when it happens, some financial responsibilities come with it. Ilori urges that a digital solution platform will provide hitch free and transparent activity. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawonlu has reiterated his administration's commitment towards supporting innovative ideas and investment in technology to achieve global solutions. Governor Sawunlu who stated this at the opening ceremony of the Microsoft facility at Ikoyi said it was inspiring to see efforts made by the company in putting up the smart building despite the challenges posed by COVID-19 pandemic. Well, it's incredible to see what, you know, um, the imprint of Microsoft, you know, here in Lagos and in Nigeria. I mean, given the level of investment, it's, it's not only um, um, encouraging, it's actually very audacious. I must indeed um, see that it's um, going wrong. It's, it's indeed a smart building, you know, and, and you've put a lot of resources. I don't expect anything less with a global name like Microsoft. But it's really around how we now, like you said, develop local, you know, skills and local talents, you know, and local 
you know, people we understand what needs to be needs to be done to ensure that you know um, your investment are safe and secure. But more importantly, the kind of partnership that you require, you know, to see it grow. You know, um, um, as a government directly, you know, we see ourselves working with Microsoft even on the business side. But more importantly, in terms of infrastructure and developing the space so that you know, granularly people, you know, and the citizens can utilize the full benefits of what resources are been put in here. Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu has sworn in three new permanent secretaries, bringing the total numbers to 50 in his public service in less than three years. The governor charged them to justify the confidence reports on them by adding more value to the service. Almost 70 to 75 percent of the current crops of permanent secretary were appointed in our administration. And that tells two things. One, um, the fact that we want to identify, continue to identify, you know, um, and, and recognize the brightness of, 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 of our whole lot in the, in the service of Lagos State. And that's what we're doing. Secondly, is also to give people that are deserving this position. Um, we know how enviable it is to rise up to the position of permanent secretary, but if you're deserving of it, um, we, will not, um, we will not deny you or deny you of that. As part of measures to ensure and guarantee the comfort and maximum safety of commuters, the Lagos State Government has launched a new e-hailing taxi scheme. The scheme will complement the multimodal transport network being developed in Lagos in accordance with the strategic master plan of the state. That's according to the governor. A partnership agreement for a new e-hailing transport scheme was signed in 2021 by Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawunlu and Chinese CIG Motors Company Limited. The result of that agreement is now manifest with the launch of the new e-hailing tax scheme. It is known as Lagos Ride with 1,000 sport utility vehicles for the first phase. The scheme is expected to compete with other e-hailing platforms. The driver or operator has a right to own the vehicle after payment is fully made within three to four years. Governor Sawunlu said the initiative is to further ensure a seamless transportation system for the commuting populace in the state. Under this arrangement, all beneficiaries will be provided with a brand new car, which over time will become the driver's property after the completion of the payments of the vehicles that have been heavily subsidized. The governor described today as historic. He said it's a step to further drive the development of the transportation master plan to put Lagos on the plan of a safer, comfortable, modern and forward-looking tax scheme. We are starting and we are putting our money down to show to the private sector that we can do it and we all can do it collaboratively. These are no workers of Lagos State. These are Lagosians, these are Nigerians that will be taking over this. So our arms are open to other private sector investors to join us to ensure that we can increase this fleet to 3,000, to 5,000, to 10,000. Commissioner for Transportation, Frederick Oladende highlighted some of the safety features of the scheme. The safety and security of lives and property are equally as paramount as the pleasure the drivers or the riders will enjoy on the Lagos Ride taxi schemes. Hence, the installation of security embedded dashboard camera in each car for real time activities and monitoring with panic buttons connected to the control command center. That can be used to either that can be used by either parties inside the car in case of assault or emergency. Plus, TV News spoke with some of the beneficiaries. It was something that we saw that will be of benefit to drivers, especially to alleviate the challenges and the burdens that drivers have in terms of owning their cars. The modern ride service is one of the state government's socio-economic intervention programs. 
the government promised to get it professionally managed in line with global best practices. Sort your waste and get reduction in waste bill. That's a message from the Managing Director, CEO of Lagos Waste Management Authority, Loma, Mr. Ibrahim Odumboni, to Lagosians. Odumboni said residents who comply would get reduction in waste bills and increase for those who don't. He added that Loma was engaging recycling as a veritable tool to tackle the challenge of plastic pollution as a state generated about 13,000 metric tons of waste daily with plastic materials constituting 17%. Joining me shortly is the Managing Director, CEO of Lagos Waste Management Authority, Loma, Mr. Ibrahim Odumboni, for more insight into how Loma is complementing the Governor Sawulu's themes agenda and a dream of a smart mega city. Thus, after this break, please stay with us. <music> In terms of waste management, there are various uh, chains in the, in the uh, various steps in the value chain of waste management that we need to ensure that key law cares are taken about from point of generation, sorting your waste from source, containerization, collection, uh, disposal and treatment, and also maybe waste to energy and waste to wealth. We need to ensure that that's, that chain all connects very well. And part of the way we want to connect is to encourage the separation from source so that the end, end value will be there for everyone to see. Also, if we look at it, if we continue to sort our waste from source, we can tackle things like uh, pollution, plastic pollution, and waste pollution in a couple of areas across the states. So if we look at Lagos, as uh, about 25 million plus people living in there, knowing fully well that each and every one of us we generate about 176 single bottle a year. And with that in mind, we have about 4 billion bottles generated annually. So if those 4 billion has been generated annually are not captured or taken aback to produce new ones, does that really mean that over the next 10 years we're gonna do 40 billion bottles? What about the previous 40 billion bottles that we have? So we can't continue that vein of that, that vein. We need to change the way we live, we need to modernize. We're now we are an emerging economy in Lagos, and I know that we are a pace setter for other states in Nigeria. So talking to our people to ensure that they separate their entire waste from source is going to be a massive push towards achieving a smarter city and the team's agenda. So for us, we cannot continue to depend on the landfill structure where everything goes to the landfill. We should be able to extract all the usable resources from our waste before we consider landfill as an option. And I know that there will be a point from our plan over the next 10 years to ensure that we achieve a zero waste in Lagos as an emerging economy in Africa and, a, and, and, and as a pace setter for other states and other countries around us as well. And for our household, uh, the reason why we initiated that from the 1st of April, all residential estates and, com and companies or private organizations should start is because before we roll it out to everyone across the state, we believe those are organized environments where it's controllable and achievements are measurable as well. And we've also seen that a lot of these our communities, since the introduction of uh, with, uh, Blue Box scheme, which gave back to Lagos Recycle, was initiated on the 5th of September 2019. We've seen a couple of estates that are doing one form or the other of recycling. But now we're formalizing it. We're encouraging them, we're encouraging them to ensure that the waste are not commingled. We also encourage them to use a two bin system where there's a general waste and there's a recyclable waste. And we want to ensure that all our recyclables are also used to generate jobs. A lot of jobs have been generated from recycling over the last 24 months. Over 6,000 jobs and counted. And we believe that there will be effects on our lagoons and shorelines and our drainages you, there will be a time where you won't be able to see any single bottle in our drainages, in our canal, and water could flow easily. And all the marine habitats, we have the freedom to develop without having to be uh, also accommodating plastics or flotables. Among them. Paying for waste management is sacrosanct. It's not free. Because the people that are running are the people that are going for you, catering for your domestic waste all across. Loma, as an agency at Lagos State, we cater for the public spaces. 
and we regulate all the private, uh, uh, private businesses or private uh, residential properties that they service. But these businesses are there to, they are there as a, as a business that we are building to grow. We don't want any of them to be a going concern. So if people are resisting to pay, pay to them, it's basically you're, you're, you're denying them the opportunity to be able to transact. And I want to also state that uh, we have a, a enforcement and monitoring team that ensure that when we have cases like that, our, um, our what do people call wole wole, our health officers are there to support the CDAs, the CDCs, to be able to tackle or mitigate against any of this course and, and, and manage the situation when we have any tenement or any household that's having the issue of uh, waste management. And in situations whereby it's gone beyond management, then we have a, a legal system that backs that. So the legislative arm of Lagos State also backs us over 28 magistrate courts. There's no room for ignorance. There's no room for excuses. We've now gone all the way. We created Loma Academy to be able to educate people and create awareness. All our public primary schools in Lagos, through the support with Subeb and Mr. Governor, Mr. Rajiv Samolu, we've been able to educate them on waste management. And they're going to be, they are going to be our ambassadors, our advocates for the parents that they are, that are, that they are under to be able to ensure that we try and change from bottom up while we continue to use publicity, media outreach, like this conversation, to let our adults understand and also remind them of their responsibility. But all in all, there is no excuse for ignorance in waste management. We do a lot of things across stream and it's always out there and that's why we are lighted for all stakeholders, all interested parties to be able to understand where we are and where we stand at this point in time. We've been very innovative and we've been very proactive about the way we approach waste management in Lagos over the last two years by showcasing ourselves and ensuring that a lot of ways we're communicating to people with what we're doing. So we have our social media handles, our website, our app, and also we collaborate with other agencies to make sure that our message are passed across. There is no day that you will not hear about Loma, either in the news or you see us or with our PSPs or with our sweepers that are on the road. But the key thing that I must stress out there is waste management goes beyond collection and, and dumping of waste. The, the only part of it that we need to all work on, which is me, you, and all our listeners out there, is the attitude and change. You can deploy the entire trucks in the old world to Lagos to manage waste. But if we don't change our attitude, if we don't start doing the right thing the first time, if we don't start doing what we know that is proper, if we don't start following what the law says, if we don't start looking after ourselves, if we don't start changing our attitude to what a cleaner environment is, we all know this. We all know the benefit of a environment. We all know the benefit of what clean environment brings to in terms of health. We all know all these things, so, but why are we still doing the wrong thing? So that's why we continue to advocate. You see, Loma, we've started going across all the LCDA this year. We've been to 18 LCDAs out of the LCD and LGA out of the 57, and we continue to ensure that all that is completed before the first week of June. And what do we do there? We go there, we exercise them across the chain of waste management from collection, generation, separation, containerization, recycling, treatment. And, and also the lose of achievements that we made, one of, the, one of the major ones is you look at COVID-19 without Loma, where do you think we'll be with COVID-19? Lagos as a very, as a popular, as a very popular uh, populated state, what do you think we'll be with COVID-19? With a small landmass, all surrounded by water, everybody conjugating as one, what impact, what, 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 uh, what role do you think Loma played? So for people out there, a lot of people out there understand that we played a vital role to support our government, Mr. Bajesh Samolu, ensuring that uh, COVID-19 was mitigated, we mitig mitigated again the risk of COVID-19. We started reincinerating all our, all our medical waste during the period of COVID-19 till date. So we take all the medical waste all across the state and ensure that they are all incinerated. We moved away from traditional treatment of medical waste. We also ensure that we have a dedicated team that are trained and specialist in this. And by doing so, we're able to reduce all the risk up across. We've also used that to develop and automate our system in terms of management of waste. 
we've looked at the need for us to, to regionalize our operation. So we divide our operation into five different districts, and then we manage from there. So if you tell me now what's going on in Ekpe or Badagri, with a click of a finger, I can tell you exactly what's there because I have Loma operatives there. So we've done a lot across. We've reformed some of our legacy programs, like the sweeping program is all being reformed. Our engineering team is now functioning as a solely made in Nigeria engineering team. We make our beans ourselves. We, are, we design our trucks ourselves. We assemble our truck ourselves. We fix our truck ourselves. We are making things ourselves rather than buying and maintaining. So a lot of changes across. But for us, I think one of the reflections that we have in waste management is we have a lot of, Lagos has a very big advantage over every other state in Nigeria. In, the, in terms of waste management, in terms of the fact that the human capital and the stakeholders around it are very knowledgeable and passionate about it. Starting from the governor, he understands it very well and he provides a lot of mentorship and leadership and coaching for us on waste management. So it's given. We have a governor that waste management is given to. Then I, um, I have a lot of management team or senior executive team in Loma and even all the junior staff in here. We are all very scientific about everything we do. And sustainability is very key to us. So a lot of things I've known, a lot of things I've learned, a lot of things I'm learning. There's no end time to learning in, 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 in waste management. And all these people that have been in this practical over the years are now having the benefit of having someone from, 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 the, from the economic side of things, from the technical side, coming in to inject a lot of sustainability into what we're doing. So I really appreciate the opportunity this gives. But for Lagosians, it's, it's, it just basically demonstrates what the future holds for us. Waste management is never going to be the same. Every year, year in, year out, there will be changes that we are making for a better living for Lagos. For Lagos as a whole. I'm very confident that by the end of this year, we have an MOU in place for our first energy facility in Lagos. But I must state that uh, in Lagos, the energy facility that we're going to have in Lagos, we will try and find the best sustainable at, at a very affordable cost and also strategically placed for the states. We are also going to look at what fits. We are not going to use one size fits all, but we are going to check, choose the best proponents, the most active proponents and the more realistic proponents to be able to deliver that to us. We've reached a time whereby 100% of what we have in waste can be put to use. And in putting that to use, it is very important that we understand what our future goals are. Our future goal for waste management is to have uh, an energy plant in Lagos, which is our immediate goal in, in, in this year. And then to ensure that over the next three or four years, we start to help to solve some of the energy problems that we have in, in entirety across the states. And by in 10 years time, we should be able to have replicated what we've done across certain parts of Nigeria and look at movable energy. If you look at the team's agenda, one of the key agencies that was mentioned in the team's agenda, if you really digest it, is Loma. Loma was mentioned as an agency on the team's agenda when looking at the health and environment. And it shows the importance of what we do here to every part of the agenda. And I believe that with the structure of the team's agenda, Chris, and the interlink that Loma has with other agendas, we are on course to ensure that a successful delivery is given to all the ultimate goals of the agenda. And I, 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 can, I can well assure you that we're given the opportunity to innovate, develop, evolve, be dynamic, and challenge the norm in Loma. And that's why we are here where we are now. On a daily basis, we challenge the norm. We go to look at status quo. What do we need to change there? What do we need to improve? If it's not broken sometimes, we leave it. But if it needs to be fixed, we go all out and find out the root cause and how can we make sure that the changes that we are making is sustainable. And I can tell you out there, part of the smart city agenda and the team's agenda is to ensure that we're not just doing it and it's just not coming from somebody's head or somebody's thought or somebody's ideology. We are now professionalizing what we're doing. So I'm happy to tell you that even all my management team and my junior management team will be proceeding on a sustainability and circular economy training for them to be certified as waste manager for the state. And what that does is it creates sustainability for Loma for the future 
and also builds on from what our governor's agenda is uh, in Lagos State. That's all we have for you in this episode of the Greater Lagos Vision on Plus TV Africa. I'm Lovikuku Uyedoku. Bye for now. Thank you.